All right, welcome back to the New Equity Network show. Michael Yorba, your host, uh, broadcasting to you live on 1160 KVCE, DFW's Business Authority. I've got David Duggan, CEO, Viral Network Inc., on the show. ViralNetworkInc.com is a website. David, welcome back to the show. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right, my pleasure. All right, you, you really help the listening audience help get their message out to their company briefly most of you know that most of the audience knows your voice by now but there's new listeners all the time so briefly viral network what it does and then let's drive into what remarketing does and how it works sure so viral network has been a um, online marketing company for public companies for about four and a half years now and the entire goal has been to simplify the marketing model so that public companies only pay for results. So get rid of the, you know, in between all the smoke and mirrors and only pay when an investor actually wants to hear about their story. So oh, over the last, you know, two years, we've had to make some big moves in getting in some in-house software, some new expertise, and that's what's allowed us to launch our new program, which is called the Performance-Based Online Marketing Program. All right. And that allows us to do all the risky marketing at tactics and only allow the public company to pay when an investor wants to uh actually learn about the story. Now, there's a term out there that the people who are, are really entrenched in, in marketing, using digital marketing methods, th they know so well, but there's a lot of people out there that don't. What is remarketing and how does it work? Sure, and it's a great question. A lot of people just goes right over their head because it sounds so simple. But a lot of us are familiar with remarketing without even knowing what it is. Uh, and a typical example, if any of us have ever visited a, you know, a travel website, let's say Expedia or Travelocity, and then you go on other websites afterwards, you're just minding your own business, even let's say you go to your own social media account, uh, you might notice that there's ads that follow you, you know, and those are, ads are eerily smart. You know, it, it knows that you just search for a flight to, let's say, Mexico, so it's showing you other flights or, you know, maybe it's a deal on a, on a car while you're in Mexico. These ads get frequently cor correct and, and specific, you know. So you might have not even purchased your, your your trip, but it'll say, "Hey, you know, maybe you need a car while you're in Mexico." So that's what remarketing is about: is when you go on a website, that website learns about about you. You know, it learns what you did on that website as well as where you're from. And every time you visit a website now, you're able to put a, a almost a tracking code. You know, it's a, you know, marketing world doesn't like to use that term. So they have to say the word cookie because <laughs> right. it sounds a lot more friendly, but that's actually what it is, is you put a tracking beacon on the user and then you're able to continue to market to them as they go around the web. So it's a little bit unnerving when you look at it from the user's point of view and you know a lot of people don't <laughs> like to see these, these ads that follow them, um, but there is ways to use this technology to your advantage um, and it's just about uh, you know, knowing how it all works and using it properly. How effective is it these days? I mean, remarketing has been around for a little while, but th there's got to be new twists, nuances that, that, that you would use to, to, to always optimize the use of that tool. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of it comes down to realizing the, the buying habits and, and the psychology that goes behind um, all of us as people. You know, we get distracted very easily. So if we're online and we actually were intending on learning about a public company, but who knows, you know, we got a text message, you know, we, something came up, an email, uh, we saw, you know, a nice thing that went by. Our attention span goes in all different directions at all different times. So we might have left the website of the public company we were looking to, um, not because we didn't want to learn about them or, you know, just because something came up. So remarketing is very, very good to keep the message in front of people uh, in a subtle way. You know, it's very important not to cross the line and get aggressive and keep saying the same thing over and over again, mm. because that's where it gets very annoying. And if any of us have seen uh, remarketing and, and witnessed it, you're not supposed to notice it. If it's done properly, you should have no idea that you're being remarketed to, because the point of remarketing is to not jam the same story down their throat. If we already went on the website based on the, 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 the ad or whatever it was you're showing us, then you shouldn't keep showing us that same ad because it already worked and it's just going to annoy us. Um, so that's kind of the, the basics is to have a, a, a you know, sort of a background of at least six to seven different versions of ads built up. And if you've got a proper um, remarketing system in place where we use a very robust uh, advertising platform behind the scenes with Viral Network, 
uh, where we're able to, to see what ad drove you to the website in the first place. So if ad number four got you to the website, then we'll make sure that doesn't get shown. And if you didn't convert as an email subscriber, then we'll continue to remarket to people using ads one, two, three, five, six, and seven um, until they come back and convert. Or if they end up not coming back and we've used all the ads, then we'll consider that person to be done with. Are there optimum times when it, you start to get into diminishing ter- or diminishing returns on, on using remarketing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's almost becoming as powerful these days as an in-house email list. And so for a public company, there's a lot of ups and downs when it, in terms of telling the story. And primarily that comes in the form of news releases and big milestones that a company hits. So it's, uh, it's, it's almost more important to be light when it comes to mar- uh, remarketing and then very heavy when you have something that's really important to say. Um, so in that same example of having multiple different ads that can go out to the remarketing list, you can also create a brand new ad profiling a news release or a big milestone or whatever that's, that's, that's happening and use it almost like a wire service. You know, just like you would create a custom email to send out to your subscriber base, you can create a custom ad that goes out and, and uh, is shown to that entire group of people. And it basically would be anyone that's visited your, your website in the last 6 to 12 months. You can then specifically target them, and the ad showing your news release will, go, will appear to them on all the websites that they're, they're um, visiting. So even if they're on their social media accounts or doing their own research, your news release will be in front of them. What I what I mean by the question is the the, the remarketing that that's that ad that follows you around, and you've got a variety of ads so that you you figure out which one we're going to optimize and, and go with. Over a length of time, you get tired of seeing the ads, and you get tired of hearing from the same people. And people's buying habits change as as time progresses. You know, our attention span is 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 much less now than it has than it was twenty years ago. Right. From your experience, the the use of an ad over a period of time, six months to follow the the potential client or customer around, three months now. What is what are you starting to see out there? Is that with that moving target? Oh no, I I would say it's a lot less than that. You know, the the first ad, if if someone's seen it, mm-hmm. usually we will stop showing the ad after the second time it's been viewed. Okay. So you you, you don't want to get annoying with it, uh-huh. uh, and that's one of the biggest issues with remarketing. Is because people just use the same thing over and over again. They say, well, as long as that message is out there, it's going to work, and it, it gets counterproductive after a while. Yeah, absolutely, and that that's something that it, it can also. Yeah, it also is um, almost a negative effect. You know, if, if initially someone was intrigued and they say, oh, okay, you know, I, I'm interested, I, I noticed the company, I saw the key message, I saw the symbol, well, okay, that's enough for them. But if all of a sudden they keep seeing the same thing all over the place, um, that almost has become a, a negative deterrent. So it's very important. If you're going to venture into the remarketing world, there's a lot of things you can do wrong that will actually be a negative effect. Uh, also a tremendous asset if you use it properly. So when you launch the campaign, you should be, you should have, I think what I, I heard from you, if I heard it right, you should have at least five different messages in different forms, different different types of ads that you're going to use so it's more subtle and more inviting rather than just keep pounding the same message. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. Yeah, and it, it all comes down to the same principle. If you're having a conversation with someone and you, you tell them your pitch, but right. they just don't get it, you know, they're, they're sort of on the fence most of us are going to have, you know, at least four or five different angles that we can come back and say, oh, well, did you know this is what we're working on? Or if this project goes through, this is what it means. You know, all these different, sometimes I call them ammunition points. Mm-hmm. Those are what we bring up in conversations. So that's kind of what you want, how you want to look at advertisements, is those little ammunition points that you can use in a conversation, you also want to bring up in, uh, in an ad. So if someone's only received ammunition for three, then you bring up one, two, five, et cetera, um, in, through remarket. The effectiveness, that, yeah, and we've got about a minute left before we go to a break, but the effectiveness, it seems to me that this is really a, a, a more effective way to reach out to people than hiring a call center or using direct mail these days. Oh, yeah, well, because everything is all about the specific attention span. Everyone's trying to find real estate on the devices that we use most. Right. And it's going further and further away from phones and more and more to screens, people scrolling and searching and, and, and sharing and all that stuff. So remarketing puts you right in front of where the audience is. That's 
Got it. Let's let's do this, David. Let's take a little break here and we'll get into some case studies, some specific examples that you've worked with in the past. All right. Sounds great. All right. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with David Duggan, CEO Viral Network, Inc. On the other side of this break, you've been listening to Michael Yorba on the New Equity Network show broadcast to you live on 1160 KBCE, DFW's Business Authority. 